Hi, I'm Lawrence Brom, director and producer at Shambhala Studio, and I'm coming to you from the ashram at Shambhala Studio. And this is the Lotus Born Master 8 Manifestation Lakang. I just felt like talking to you from here. This Lakang was a place we spent a lot of time meditating, practicing, just being. And I want to be with you in this space and tell you why Shambhala Studio is shifting over into sci-fi feature films from our traditional documentary style. And so the fourth film in our series, which is actually the first of our feature films, which is Lotus Born Master, the Shambhala Access Code. It's a transitional film. It's already won a number of awards because of its experimental style, that it has aspects of documentary, but it's been presented through a feature film format. And this is now going to have a series of short talks kind of a decoding some of the meanings of the film because it's actually layered. The way we like to make films is layers of meaning. And one watches it and starts to decrypt the different layers. It's like peeling away and orange, you know, keeps going and going. And you get into the labyrinth and eventually you get into finding out the meaning of this to yourself and everyone else. So the film has a number of actors in it. Yeah, I'm one of the actors now. I'm not a very good actor, but actually the reason why we decided for me to act the protagonist is because it's building on the previous documentary series. It goes all the way back to 2002, when me and cinematographer Do Yan began the search for Shangri-La. And really, rather than get someone to act me, let's the team said, let's just do it, you know, you act yourself. Uh, be the conduit that carries us in the direction that we're going to go in the next stage. So the other actors around me, uh, you have John Shang, who is the chief agent. He's a very good actor. He's quite well known. He's done a lot of Kung Fu movies as well. And also Mayela Margot, uh, who has done a number of movies with us. Uh, she is an amazing martial artist and stunt performer. She can do all kinds of things. Dan and Christopher, others and professional actors uh, as the agents. Now the film begins with me and Maella Margot appearing uh, in a crater up on the cliffs. And this is a very, very desolate place um, in a Mongolian desert. And it's actually an extinct volcano crater. And there I'm working with the Porba and she's working with the moon knife and the idea is to, to dream. This is something that's occurring in uh, maybe a dream if we want to use our spatial configuration, or maybe it's another dimension if we want to use another way of looking at spatial configurations. And you have the yin and yang energies, the yab and yum, in an interactive symbiosis working together. And suddenly, bam, I get a message in the cell phone. Uh, So we like to use this image of this cell phone. If you've noticed, the cell phone I use is very punk. The rings I use are punk. A lot of things are this way because, why? Because of metallic energy. Remember the Purba is the conductor of electricity. Copper is the way in which electricity moves. So is silver and gold. And so the whole idea of metallic is about vibrational frequencies as a symbol, okay? And there suddenly in the cell phone appears the prophecy of Shambhala, which is predicting where we'd be in this age of Kali or destruction, there'd be diseases that would arise and nobody's ever heard of before. They can't be cured of war, fighting, poverty. The middle class will be down in the poor. And they'll be the super rich, will be controlling everything. And it's basically predicting what's happening today. I mean, it's spot on. And I received that message. I look at it. I look into the Dakini's eyes and bam, we're in another dimension and I'm being arrested by the agency. And I'll tell you why they're arresting me in the next episode.